Hello, my name is Chuck Liebel. I'm a below ground product manager here at OPW Retail Fueling. And today we're gonna to go through uh, the installation, uh, preparation, and measurement for a 71SO installation into an underground storage tank system. So for today's uh, purposes there, we're gonna be using our simulated cutaway tank that we have up here to, uh, to do the measurements and uh, the actual final installation of the server fill valve. So today we're gonna to step you through all the different tools that you'll need to do the installation. Uh, we'll actually just show you what comes into the box and removal of the overfill valve and all the different components that you get with the 71SO overfill valve. And then we'll show you how to do the very specific measurements using this tank setup as an example to help you be able to do this in the field when the tank is actually buried under the ground below you there. So when we're complete with the whole, uh, with the whole cut and uh, measurement of the system there, we'll take the valve over here and reinstall that into our cutaway tank and demonstrate how this would get installed after, after we complete the installation and preparation of the valve. Today's video is really just a supplement to help as an aid to uh, installing the server fill prevention valve. I can't stress enough that you really must follow the installation guide. It's part number H15524PA, and this comes with every one of our 71SO uh, overfill prevention valves. Uh, today, during our demonstration here, we're gonna be using uh, the 95% cutoff um, method over there. So the valve cuts off at 95% in the tank. Um, but when you're doing your installation in the field, please check with your local, state, and national um, authority having jurisdiction to find out what the codes are that you must meet in order to install this overfill valve correctly. Today's demonstration video is for a 95% cutoff, but this can be easily adjusted for any desired tank capacity. Contact the authority having jurisdiction in your area, as well as review the local, state, and national codes for the shutoff requirements affecting you. Also, take into account other site-specific considerations affecting the shutoff, such as extreme tank tilt. Today, we are installing a non-testable overfill valve. A few, a few are installing the testable 71SO valve. Please also see the supplemental video, as this has slight modifications to the upper tube calculation, as well as demonstrates the testable feature installation instructions. Now we're going to walk you through the measurement calculation for the upper tube. This can seem complicated at first, but we will walk you through an example on our test setup and show, show you how this can be easily done if you have the proper materials and follow our guide and worksheet. First locate the tank calibration chart for where this will be installed. This will tell you the dipstick depth for the actual volume stored in the tank. So for instance, a 10,000 gallon tank does not actually have a total capacity of 10,000 gallons. In our example, a 10,000 gallon tank actually can store 9,696 gallons. Note the actual maximum volume in the tank and mark the corresponding dipstick value in the Y location of the worksheet. Next, calculate the desired shutoff volume by multiplying the actual maximum volume of the tank times the desired shutoff percentage. In our case, we will multiply the 9,696 gallons times the 95%. This gives you a desired shutoff capacity of 9,211 gallons. Then locate the closest dipstick reading for the shutoff volume on the tank chart. Select the volume next lowest to this amount as a safety factor. Write the corresponding dipstick reading for this amount on the spreadsheet as the X value. In this example, this X value would be corresponding to the 9,204 gallon dipstick reading of 82 and 1 quarter inches. Subtract the X value from the Y value in the worksheet to capture the Z value. In our example, we will be subtracting 82 and a quarter inches from the 91 and 5 eighths inches, and this gives us 9 inches and 3 eighths. Subtract 2 inches from this, and you will have the upper tube depth inside the tank. For our example, this will give us 7 inches and 3 eighths. This must be at a minimum of 6 and a half inches to allow a workable clearance for the float arm in the tank. If our calculated value is greater than this, then use the calculated value. If it is less than this, use 6 and a half inches. Since our value today is 7 and 3 eighths inch, we will use that instead of the six and a half inches. Next, measure the distance between the underside of the top of the tank to the ceiling surface for the A value. For our case, we are using a 2200 spill container, and this includes a built-in face seal adapter as our ceiling surface. Taking a measurement from the underside of the tank to this safe face seal adapter surface gives us 13 inches. Other spill container models, such as the 2100 or the single wall edge, would require a separate face seal adapter for vapor tight systems. So you would make a measurement to the top of the face seal adapter in this instance. If this is a non vapor tight system installation, the overfill valve may be installed at the top of the nipple below the fill adapter. The measurement then would be to the top of the nipple in this situation. 
Again, this is a non-testable overfill valve installation. So we will add the A value to the upper tube depth identified earlier and make sure that this is greater than the 16 inch minimum value required. This ensures that we have enough room for the bend in the tube to operate correctly with the valve. 7 and 3 eighths plus 13 inches in our example is 20 inches 3 eighths, and this is greater than 16 inches. So our upper tube length value today is 20 inches and 3 eighths. Next we will walk you through how to cut the upper tube to the correct length. Attach the tape measure to the seam where the upper tube is attached to the valve body. Locate the measurement from the upper tube length we, we determined earlier and mark the valve body in this location. Next, move the band clamp included in the insulation packet to just below this marking. Make sure the band clamp is square to the tube and tighten this down. Using a fine tooth hacksaw, cut the tube using the band clamp as a guide. Rotate the tube as you cut it to ensure a square cut and reduce any run out. Once the tube is cut, remove the band clamp. Using a half round file, remove any burrs from the cut tube and then finish this with an emery cloth or a fine grain sandpaper. Clean any debris from the inside of the tube with a cloth, but ensure the debris does not fall into the valve mechanism itself, as this could cause damage. We will now show you how to attach the inlet tube to the upper tube. Remove the inlet tube box from inside the 71SO box. Apply black molly grease to the inside of the upper tube and to the seal on the outside of the inlet tube. Press the inlet tube squarely into the upper tube until it is flush to the top. Be careful not to press this in at an angle or the seal may become cut and lose its ability to achieve vapor tightness. Next, remove the drill guide from the 71SO Tool CT Kit. Attach the guide to the inlet tube by identifying the keys on both the guide and the inside boss of the inlet tube. Tighten the set screw so that this is held flush and square to the inlet tube. Remove the drill bit from the 71SO Tool CT Kit and ensure that the stop on the bit is between 1 and 3 sixteenths to 1 and a quarter inches. This ensures that the drill does not penetrate through the inlet tube and create a leak path on the overfill valve. Drill the three holes using the drill guide to stop the bit. Be careful not to move the guide between drilling each hole or they may not align during the assembly. Remove the drill guide and dimple the first hole using the dimple tool included in the insulation tool kit. Before dimpling any remaining holes, apply a small amount of black molly grease to the screw threads and thread in the first screw. This helps align the remaining three screws. Using a torque wrench, tighten the screw between 20 and 35 inch pounds. Repeat the dimple and screw insulation for the same manner for each of the remaining two holes to complete the upper tube assembly. Next we will show you how to assemble, calculate, and cut the lower tube. Remove the protective cap from the bottom of the valve body. Clean and remove any debris and apply black molly grease to the o-ring as well as the threads on the valve body and the lower drop tube. Carefully thread the lower drop tube onto the valve body, making sure not to accidentally bend the upper tube as you would do this process. If needed, apply a strap wrench to the welded seam to tighten the lower tube past the o-ring and snug to the valve body. At this time, a pressure test can be applied to the valve by plugging the lower and upper portions of the valve and applying a maximum of 10 inches of water column to ensure that it is vapor tight. To cut the lower drop tube, measure the bottom of the tank to the drop tube sealing surface location. Consult the local authority having jurisdiction for the cut angle and the distance required from the bottom of the tank and subtract this from the measurement. For this case, we'll use 6 inches as a maximum distance and cut this at an angle that does not exceed the 6 inches. Using a fine tooth hacksaw, cut the lower tube at the desired marking. Again, use a half circle file and fine sandpaper to remove any burrs from the bottom of the tube. Clean any of the debris from the inside of the tube with a cloth, but again, ensure that this does not fall into the valve mechanism itself. The valve is now ready to install into the underground storage tank. So here's our fully prepared um, 71SO overfill prevention valve that we uh, completed through all the measurements and the cutting in the laboratory. And the next step that we're gonna show is the installation of this into our cutoff uh, tank system that we have simulated here. Now, of course, the bottom of this tube is much smaller than what you guys will have likely in the field. Uh, but for our purposes here, this will actually fit inside of our, um, our, our simulated cutaway tank over here in, in this uh, environment. So the first step that we have is uh, to apply the O-ring to the underside of the inlet adapter, the blue inlet adapter here. So you simply move that O-ring and you stretch it around the top of that inlet adapter and roll it over underneath like this. So the next step after that is to remove the rubber band around the float arm. And then I would suggest lifting up the rubber band, the uh, float arm to make sure that it's operating correctly. 
So as you lift up the float arm, you should see the valve move on the inside, past the protective bend, and into where the flow of the uh, fluid would be during a drop. After that, you should inspect the riser to make sure that there's not a lot of uh, like scale from, from, of rust inside of the riser or over spray from the tank inside of it, so that's in good condition inside of there. If there is a lot of scale or overspray, please clean that out before installing the, uh, the 71SO into that um, riser area. Now the 71SO is ready to install into the underground storage tank. So when you get ready to install this, hold the float arm flat against the valve body like this and begin to insert the lower tube into the spill bucket and then into the riser. As you drop this past the opening uh, in the spill container, you can let go of the float arm so it rests out and just start dropping it into the underground storage tank. Once the valve gets past the riser into the tank, you'll see that the float arm extends out past and is no longer flat against the valve body. Once it's installed too, you'll want to orient the float arm to be along the length of the tank. That way it ensures that there's nothing within 14 inches of the valve so that the float arm can operate freely when the fuel rises and lifts it. You can do this by positioning the protective bend on the inside of the overfill valve to the lengthwise position of the tank. So the purpose of a jack screw kit is this fits above the overfill valve and below the nipple for the inlet adapter. And it's two plates that are separated by three screws that expand and compress these plates out, thus compressing the O-ring that's on the underside of the 71SO to the face seal adapter and ensuring a good tight seal for vapor tightness. You'll see that there's two parts, a lower plate that has holes that have an indentation into it but not drilled all the way through, and an upper plate that has threads screwed into the upper plate there that the screw passes through. For our purposes today, we're installing this inside of a cast iron based spill container. So we use the cast iron base jack screw kit 61JSK-44CB. If you have a composite based spill container, you would use the 61JSK-4410 for that application. To start, take the lower flange and place this on the top of the 71SO blue inlet adapter, as such. Next, thread the screws into the upper part of the top plate. You can tell the upper part of the top plate is it has an indentation cut into it. This will actually fit on the inside of the nipple to get good grip onto it. So the three screws can pass through here. Once you have a few of the threads exposed beneath, you can apply the Loctite sealant to the upper parts of the threads. And this will ensure once we have this torqued that you'll have uh, a good stable and uh, non-moving uh, jack screw kit so you'll be able to maintain that vapor tightness. So take the three exposed parts of the screws and place those into the indention of the lower plate as such. And then you put thread sealant on the inlet adapter pipe nipple on the threads and torque this into the spill container. The, uh, the fill adapter pipe nipple should be torqued between 125 and 250 pound, 50 foot pounds. But in reality, this needs to be progressively less from the top of the tank through the top of the assembly there. This allows you to be able to remove that part of the assembly without loosening up any of the parts below that. So if you have a progressively higher torque below, you are allowed to be able to remove one of the upper pieces without spinning off anything unintentionally below that. Uh, that could be buried directly into the ground. So the inlet adapter can be, uh, nipple can be uh, tightened to torque by using the TC400 torque cap. This threads on to the upper part of the uh, nipple. And they can be tightened to spec using the 61 SA tool that fits around the ears. And can, torque can be applied to the lug at the top of that tool. So you torque this to the desired amount, and when complete, you can remove the torque cap by doing an impact in the opposite direction to loosen the cap 
from the nipple adapter as opposed to unthreading that nipple from the base. So it would be a quick jerk and you would break free the cap and you can remove the cap from the inlet nipple. As you can see, the jack screw kit is still loosely installed between the inlet nipple and the overfill valve top. Next, we need to install the 61 SALP to the inlet nipple inside of the spill bucket. Using the 61 SA tool and a torque wrench, tighten the 61 SALP to between 90 to 110 foot-pounds of torque. Finally, using a hex head tool and a torque wrench, tighten each of the three jack screw kit bolts to three and a half to five foot-pounds of torque to ensure even and tight compression of the O-ring sealing the 71SO. For non-vapor tight applications, the 71SO is often located between the inlet adapter and the nipple between that and the spill base. So install the 71SO through the nipple connected to the spill container base. and then attach the inlet adapter to the top of the nipple. Now that you have the 71SO correctly installed and oriented in a tank, you will need to complete any tests and measurements required by the local authority having jurisdiction, as well as any state or national codes that apply to your region. Next, install the warning plate inside of the spill bucket. Bend the three warning plate ears down and then slide the tie wrap over the warning plate ears and position the warning plate against the riser pipe approximately one inch below the adapter. Tighten the tie wrap securely. The valve is now fully installed and in operating position.